Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So you've seen the title then. In this one, we're gonna be discussing when you can expect to see your first sale, how to make your first sale, um, and when you can expect to start making a profit as well. So I've been drop shipping now for nearly three years, in fact, over three years. So we're gonna be looking at my ad manager account from back then when I first started. So you guys can see when I made my first sale and what the kind of like first few months looks like for me. Once we've gone through that then, I'm just gonna give you some actionable information. Um, if you're starting drop shipping this year and how to succeed and how to replicate the sort of results that I was fortunate enough to do because drop shipping and Facebook Ads and Shopify um, in terms of just market demand and all of that sort of thing, then things have changed quite significantly then since when I first started over three years ago. Now before we jump into it, I just want to quickly mention as always in every every single video, um, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me. So if you want to talk to me one-to-one, -one, then all you have to do for a chance to win is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on yesterday's video, just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with that being said then, let's jump straight into it. So here we are then guys, inside my very first ad manager account that I ever created. Um, this is where I very first started three years ago now um, these are all the different campaigns and you won't be able to see the names because I've blurred them out because I still actually sell some of these products even still today um, I just want to draw your attention though to the date in the top right corner you can see it's June 30th 2016 um, and this was actually my very first day advertising and I was actually fortunate enough to make a sale and it was actually this green bracelet here you won't be able to see the campaign name but to actually show you the product this is the exact product from the exact supplier as well I'm going to show you some more proof in a second but before I do that just to kind of prove that was my very first day advertising I'm just gonna go June 29th all the way back to November 2015 um, just to show you total spent was zero so June 30th was actually the very first day I started advertising don't ask me why I started on that day for whatever reason um, I spent four pounds 84 to spend um, to return £7.99 so not brilliant but as you can imagine um, I was pretty excited about that I was starting a new business and the fact that somebody was buying a product from me that I hadn't even seen that was in China that was going to be shipped direct to them um, it was still quite an exciting moment so moving on then things um, improved uh, July 2016 I spent 390 for 455 back. I wasn't making money at that point, but at that point I didn't really care. I was starting a new business, so I was still really excited. Um, and because I was seeing the p actual potential, then I decided to invest a lot more. So if we have a look at August 2016, I spent a little bit more and I'd spend and returned over 1200 pounds. And by this point I was making like a pretty decent amount of money each month, certainly enough to notice it in my bank account. So you can imagine how excited I was at this point. So I decided to keep going, keep spending more money on ads. In September, I spent 1600s for five, four back with an even bigger ROAS. So at this point, I was making more money than I was in my nine to five job. So you can just imagine how excited I was. And just as a bit more proof then for you guys, um, we're in my AliExpress account, as you can see, all orders. Um, if we just filter, let's go from June to the end of August, you can see, you'll be able to see then the kind of products that I was selling. Um, this was like a another product I was experimenting with, but you'll see as we scroll through that like the main product that I was selling that was my winner at that time was this green kind of turquoise bracelet. So these were some like Buddha charms. These were some other bracelets. And I think actually this one was just on my site and this was just like a side purchase. People browsing would just come across this and buy it. Um, that was the Buddha bracelets again, but you can see the majority of the orders um, is this green turquoise bracelet if we just keep scrolling through and through and you can see there's just page after page of different um, drop shipping orders. In fact, at this point in time, I think I was spending quite a bit of money on these Buddha bracelets as well. You can see there's quite a few orders for them as well. Um, if we just go a bit further back, uh, if we go all the way to the bottom, um, let's go to the last page. Um, then it's just a green turquoise bracelet and these kind of charm bracelets. There was just a load of different bracelets, in fact, that I actually forgot I started selling. So, yeah, that's pretty much like what my first winning product was. And what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to close down my computer and just talk to you guys kind of like one-to-one -one about the different 
criteria of what a wedding product is today versus what it was three years ago and the kind of things that you have to do in order to get good results then when drop shipping in 2019. So in terms of differences then between now and back when I first started, the number one and biggest difference is how expensive Facebook ads are. In terms of the amount of people that are on the platform versus what they were three years ago in, re in ratio to how many people are advertising on the platform today versus three years ago, then it's become a lot more competitive and therefore a lot more expensive to advertise on it. And the only kind of effects that's had on people today is that you can't get away with lower quality, lower standard um, of products, lower quality ads. You have to up your game and you have to be better than everybody else. Three years ago, there weren't as many people advertising, therefore the standard weren't as high. If you just think about it, I mean, it's a bit of a stupid example, but if you go on holiday or into your local town center there'll be kind of like a high street a main street of shops and there'll be loads of different cafes or loads of different takeaways or loads of different restaurants and every single restaurant will be a good restaurant who will provide good service and good food and that's because it's really competitive and the only way they'll survive is by being good at what they do and that's kind of how Facebook ads is today. Unless you're good at what you're doing, then you won't survive. In terms of expectation then versus reality, in terms of expectations then um, of achieving your first sale and when you can expect to start making a profit, then it doesn't really change from what it was three years ago. The only difference is, is it's a lot harder, a lot harder. So the potential is exactly the same. You can go from naught to making 10 grand a month like I did within the first few months, except if you wanna do that today, then you have to be performing at a better quality. So you have to have a better quality ad, you have to have a really good professional looking store, and the products you're selling as well, um, I think you're gonna struggle. Like back then, I was selling products for five pound. Um, I, even, till, even today, I've tried to sell products that cheap profitability on Facebook and I just can't do it. Typically, I'll stay away from any products that I can't sell for more than 15 pounds. I like to leave myself at least 15 pound cost per purchase. Um, so anything that, any product that allows me to have that room in there, um, then that's kind of like typical, like a typical and standard criteria that I'll look for in a product. So in terms of expectations then, yes, you can make your first sale on the first day. In terms of profitability, then yes, you can be profitable from day one, but it's, a, and it's, it's an extremely hard thing to do. I was just speaking to somebody the other day on a one-to-one -one call, and they'd spent, I think it was about $6,000 on Facebook ads, and they were only just starting to make a profit, and they were confused because they'd seen people on Facebook spend a grand and make 10 grand back, and everything, number one, everything you see on social media won't be true. I don't wanna talk about that because that's not a topic of this video, but what I do wanna talk about is that it doesn't, don't ever compare yourself to other people, just focus on what you're doing. And in terms of profitability, then everything you spend on Facebook ads, you've got to see as an investment and you're spending that money to learn something. The more data you have to make comparisons, to spot patterns, then the more, likely you are to be profitable as long as you know what you're looking for that's why i put a lot of content into my course about looking at numbers and spotting patterns and knowing when to kill or scale an ad set because that's going to be the defining factor between whether you succeed or not when it comes to facebook ads on the very bottom line then in terms of making sales and becoming successful at drop shipping then there's three pillars to your success you've probably heard me mention them in previous videos and that is that you need a good store you need a good facebook ad and you need a good product. It doesn't matter how well you do one or two of those things. If you're not doing all three correctly, then the whole structure breaks down. If you think you have three pillars and you're holding something up at the top, if one of those pillars is shorter than the other one or crashes or snaps or breaks, whatever, then whatever's on top is gonna to fall over. And that is exactly how this kind of triangle works. You could have the best product in the world with the best Facebook ad in the world, but if you have a really poor looking store, um, then nobody's gonna trust you and nobody's gonna spend their money with you. And it works like this no matter what way you play it. So you could invest thousands of pounds into a really professional, decent looking store, one of the best in the world. You could have one of the best products in the world as well that 
everybody wants it but if you don't advertise it very correctly if you have a really poor facebook ad that doesn't demonstrate the product and it goes out to the completely wrong audience then again you're not going to get the success that you're hoping for so just keep that in the back of your mind if you're not getting the results that you want to see then it's either because your shopify store isn't up to standard you've got a really bad facebook ad or you've just got a product that people just don't want to buy so all that being said then how do you actually do those things correctly so let's start with facebook ads and what i'm going to do is just give you a few kind of like broad tips that will hopefully apply to everybody so this video can help as many people out as possible and then if you have any questions whatsoever then please feel free to leave them down below so number one then your facebook ad it has to demonstrate what the product does it doesn't matter whether it's a watch or in fact it depends on what your overall goal is then if you just want to purely make sales then it's all about the product if you want to build a brand then it's all about the movement so for example then nike trainers or nike if you're american if you watch, go and watch one of their ads now on YouTube, not once do they actually talk about their products. They don't say what the products are made out of or um, how they can increase your performance. They'll just talk about what people have achieved wearing their clothing, wearing their trainers, because it's all about the brand and the movement that people buy into. They're not buying into the fact that you might get an extra 5% spring um, than you would with an Adidas trainer. It's not that. It's about the brand whereas if you're trying to sell a product then the ad has to be all about the product you have to demonstrate exactly what it is and the best way you can do this then is to have somebody actually using it and showing the benefit to it show the person's face faces attract attention more than just a standalone product because people connect on that kind of level show a person showing an emotion a good company to go and look at that's done this really well is a drop shipping company called Blue Crate. If you look at all of their ads, all of their videos, it doesn't matter what the product is, they've got actors in it that are laughing, smiling, showing emotion, and just demonstrating exactly how the product works. In terms of how you create an ad doing that, then there's a couple of ways. It depends on what your budget is really or what you enjoy doing. So um, I have a dog, I'm in the dog niche, so a lot of my videos I'll film with my dog, I'll get my girlfriend to hold the camera or I'll set it up on a tripod and I'll run around the garden like an idiot with my dog, um, feeding it water from a bottle or playing with a different toy because I enjoy doing it, it's quite fun to do. If you don't want to do that, you haven't got a decent camera or you haven't got a crazy high budget, then you can simply just go on fiverr.com and you can find pretty decent product video creators um, for about $50 and they'll create you a pretty um, decent looking ad that you can then go on and start using with your Facebook ads or if you're creative yourself then simply just create one yourself. You can get free video editing softwares off the internet which you can download um, and just create your own ad. In fact there's apps on your phone in which will allow you to do so. So that's Facebook ads then. Um, hopefully you guys learned something new there or something that gives sparks an idea. That's the idea of these YouTube videos. It's just to spark some ideas in your mind. Um, anything you don't understand or you're not quite sure about feel free to leave a comment down below. I always get back to every single person um, and with that being said then let's move on to number two then which is your Shopify store so how do you create a really decent looking Shopify store and the easiest way to do it is again it depends on what your goal is if you're creating a brand then it has to be around the kind of feel and theme and movement and brand that you want to create whereas if you're if you just want to create a decent looking store that has the potential to do um, make lots of sales then I'll just recommend keeping it simple um, and not over complicating things. So have a white background, have black font, um, and have like a really neutral font as well, that like Helvetica or something like that. Um, just keep it really simple. Have decent images, again, with white backgrounds. Don't complicate it. Don't have like a pink background with blue writing. Just keep it really simple and neutral colors because then it's gonna be to the liking of everybody. When you buy a brand new house, then the walls are always white with like a gray carpet because it's neutral colors that's gonna apply to the widest range of people. And you have to apply that same principle then to your Shopify store. In terms of the product page itself then, um, I tell people this all the time. If there if there's something on the page that is there for no reason, then get rid of it. So any tax notes, anything that says tax included, get rid of that. Um, if it's not there and it's if it's on the page and it doesn't help sell the product, then get rid of it. So size charts, obviously that helps sell the product, keep it. Benefits and features that help sell the product, keep it. Product images, keep it. But tax notes that just say tax included or shipping. Um, tax and delivery to be calculated at checkout or whatever the note is that doesn't help 
sell the product. Anything that's going to create a question in your custom in your customer's mind, you need to get rid of it. The whole point of your product page is to break down those barriers so the customer has nothing left to think about um, other than how they actually buy the product. And that really is as simple as it is. So I'm not going to say anything more on that because again, I've done lots and lots of more videos in going into a ton more detail just on that topic. So with that being said, then moving on to number three then, which is your product. So how do you choose um, a really good product? So when it comes to picking a product, then there's loads of different ways to approach this. Number one, you have to make sure that it's like a viable product to drop ship. So uh, make sure it's legal in your country, for example. Don't try and drop ship weapons. Make sure you can actually advertise it on Facebook. So go to the Facebook ad policies, a simple Google search will take you straight to it. So you could like things like medical kits, you're not allowed to advertise them on Facebook. Anything that um, like within the health and beauty niche as well, you have to be quite um, careful about because anything that can create false expectations about losing weight or things like that um, will get banned as well. So just make sure you're number one, allowed to import it into your country. Number two, allowed to advertise it on Facebook. Um, and then you have to move on to things like the actual criteria of the product in terms of its weight. If it's really heavy, then is that going to be a viable product to drop ship? Because shipping is going to be crazy expensive from China. And um, the actual size of it, if you're trying to drop ship a canoe, then of course that's going to cause problems as well. Then there's the whole price of it. Um, depending on what country you're importing into, there may be certain customs and duties. So if the cost to you, if you're a drop shipping into the UK if the cost of the product including shipping is more than 15 pounds there's going to be potential customs duty that the customer is going to be liable for now it depends on the supplier some suppliers on AliExpress will put a lower value on the invoice than what you've actually paid to help it go through a notice, um, but it depends on what supplier you're using. So in terms of the physical criteria, then I think I've covered them all. Um, electrical items can be a bit of a, like a, a tricky point, especially if they plug into the wall. So just make sure you do some research into those. Make sure the supplier you're buying from has the required certificates for the country. So coming into the EU, um, as a very minimum, you need CE certificates. If the if the product arrives at customs without that certificate, then it's just gonna stay in customs um, forever and your customer will never receive it. Just make sure you do your research, be clever about this. So in terms of the physical requirements, then they are all the ones that spring to mind right now. Um, in terms of what actually makes a good product for Facebook is what I call a social product. So a product that when somebody sees it, they it, they have a connection with it, they have an emotional reaction to it. Um, and it creates attention. And I guess that's a really good way to put it, in fact, is that you wanna pick a product that's gonna create attention because that's what people are gonna share. You have to take advantage of the fact you're advertising on a social media platform. You've got all this potential access to people sharing it. Every time somebody shares your ad, your product, then you have a potentially another two to 300 people who are gonna see that. Depends on how many friends they have, obviously, but on average, um, the average Facebook user has 200 friends. So take advantage of that. Anything that attracts attention, um, and to do that, they either have to or never seen it before, have a really good interest, or have some sort of emotional connection to it. So if you're trying to advertise a fridge on Facebook, then it's gonna be a difficult thing to do because people don't get excited about fridges unless it's some sort of fridge that sings to you or does something really crazy that gets attention, then you're not gonna take advantage and you're gonna to struggle to be consistently successful with your Facebook ads. And then finally guys, because I feel like I'm talking for way too long now, is you want a product that has an actual place within a market that you can target. So for example, then I can think of a product like, it has to be a product then that there's a need for, that people will actually find useful and want to buy. So. For example, then an LED dog collar, I know it's a typical example, but it solves a problem. There's a need for it, there's a want for it because it actually does something for somebody. It makes their life easier. And there's that emotional connection to it as well in the fact that it could actually potentially save their dog's life. And people really care about dogs and that's why the LED dog collar is such an ideal product for advertising on Facebook. So just keep that in mind then when you come across a product, is there a purpose for this product? Is it just a bit of tat that nobody really wants? Or is it actually genuinely gonna improve somebody's life? 
And with that being said then guys, I think that pretty much just wraps up the video. Um, hopefully, I'll, again, I've sparked some ideas in your mind. If you have, then let me know. I always love hearing the feedback from these videos, so leave a comment down below. Um, that will enter you into the one-to-one -one draw as well. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like too. And with all that being said then, let's get into announcing the winner of the one-to-one -one call. So here we are then guys on my previous video. Remember, I'm uploading a video every single day in June. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, please do go and check it out. And I'm just gonna take the URL then top left head over to our random comment picker get youtube comments 30 unique comments which is absolutely awesome so thank you very much guys for all the support and the winner of the previous video then is final so thank you very much for your comment please do reach out on instagram and we can get that call arranged and guys if you just want to get straight down to business and book a call right away um, you can actually do so make sure you check out the links in the video description down below and with that being said then guys thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you all tomorrow